I'm flipping the knives on my Heston 3309 disc mower conditioner. You see it's behind me here. Um, I've been thinking about all the discussions going on about hay. And uh, reminding me of some of the things I've come across in my years of selling hay. Now, I'm 43 years old. Uh, I've been doing this on my own since I was 19. Uh, before that, it was helping my grandfather. Um, and some of the customers, uh, some of the things they say, uh, there's certain things that stick in my mind. Uh, I had one person come in once wanting second cutting because it was all leaves. That They didn't like to buy first cutting because they didn't like paying for the dead space in the hollow stems and did somebody did actually say this to me and i'm like shaking my head it's like okay i don't know how they came up with that one um i had somebody say uh at the auction market up in hackettstown not to me, but to another farmer. I listened to them uh, say that nobody in New Jersey knew how to make quality hay, that all the farmers here were lazy. Um, I had to listen to that argument going on. Uh, it was a year that it was wet in the late spring, early summer, and there was a lot of old first cutting around because that's that's the only thing we could make we just didn't have the window and this this woman was complaining about the hay, quality of the hay that was in there nobody in New Jersey knew how to make quality hay we're all lazy because we don't start bailing until noon if we started bailing at six o'clock in the morning we could get a lot more hay done in a day and we'd have quality hay well, you can't bale hay at 6 o'clock in the morning in New Jersey. Uh, relative humidity here is high. We get dew every night. Um, the hay is wet in the morning. It, you can't start baling for good hay until usually late morning, sometimes not noon, until noon. Uh, that's just how it is, and uh, people don't often understand that. Uh, people that should know their hay, they don't. Um, I had somebody say online once that he couldn't understand how we could bale hay during the day here because when you bale hay during the day, it turns into brown sticks and it's worthless as feeding. So how can we con people into sell, uh, buying hay like that? Well, turns out he was from one of the western states where it's very dry. They irrigate in order to grow their hay. They bale their hay at night in order to keep some dew on it so that the leaves don't fall off of it. And, you know, people sometimes think that how they do it and uh, why they do it is the same across the whole country and it, it's it's not it, climate's different in different parts of the country and uh some people i guess just don't realize that uh another one of the things uh involved a customer that came in she had bought timothy hay from another farmer or what she called timothy hay uh she said they wouldn't eat it and I had Timothy Hay here, and she says, no, no, they won't, they won't eat it, they won't eat it. I bought some from somebody else, and uh, my horses don't like it, so I want something different. So I sold her some brome grass that I had. But I asked her if I could see what the Timothy Hay looked like that she bought. And so when she came to pick up some more brome hay, she brought a bale of that supposed Timothy hay and what it was was this okay let's see if we can focus on that now this is foxtail grass 
Now somebody apparently had realized that she didn't know what she was looking at and bailed a whole bunch of nice green foxtail grass like this and told her it was Timothy and sold it to her for big dollars. Now Timothy, this is Timothy, okay? And uh, if she had bought this, the horses would have eaten it. Um, but you know, when somebody selling hay does something crooked like that, it gives us a bad name as haymakers. Um, even if like I myself don't do that kind of thing to people uh, because uh, there was a saying, there was a commercial on TV here years ago and I can't remember the name of the advertiser but uh, their saying went something like our best customer is an educated customer. Um, so I try to show people who don't know what different kinds of hay are. They don't always listen, but I don't get mad about it. But I, I, try, I try to educate customers who don't know what they should know. Um, but, you know, when you have somebody that sees that you, you don't know what you're talking about and they take advantage of you, that's, that's not good. That's unscrupulous. And the problem is you get one guy or two guys that do that, and pretty soon all of us are crooked, even though we haven't done anything. And then that makes, makes it difficult for everybody to sell hay. Um, speaking of hay producers doing things that kind of blow my mind, uh, a few years ago there was an ad, somebody was selling hay, and they made a point that their hay was the best because they used John Deere equipment. They used a John Deere baler, which meant they had better hay. Uh, I don't know, does the green and yellow paint increase the feed value of the hay as it rubs past? I, I have no idea. Um, I don't think the type of machine you use to cut or bale the hay, well I should say the type, the brand, is, uh, has as much to do with the feed value of the hay as when you cut it and, and when you bale it. But I guess some people buy into the hype, oh there goes a skydiver plane, that's what that noise is back there if you can hear it. There's an airport near here that does a lot of skydiving, and the uh, the pilot is crazy. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, those are my hay stories. Um, I'm sure I I'm leaving out some good. Oh yeah, here's another one. I was selling straw. This has happened more than once. Uh, I've had people come in and buy straw and they want to use it for bedding and at the time I was selling straw for four dollars a bale and I had somebody say well why am I paying four dollars a bale for for something that my animals are just gonna piss and poop on and it's like well you know it doesn't pop up out of the ground and tie itself into neat little bundles and then jump in the barn I have to put work and labor into that so uh, that's why it costs four dollars a bale and i said do you go into walmart and complain about the price of kitty litter because you know you don't want to pay that much for something that your cats are just going to poop and pee on and the customer just kind of looked at me funny and got back in the car and left um but i've had other people complain about the same thing they just seem to think that if you're using it for bedding it should be free and well you know if you have to put labor into making those bales it can't be free so I mean it takes all kinds in the world um, and it is what it is so that's the end of my story for now uh, talk to you later thanks for watching <laughs>